Okay, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to explore how do I create a SQL8 database using the command line. Uh, as compared to the video that we did before using a GUI application called Database Browser for SQLite, I don't think this is the preferred way, but if you're curious on how you do it, uh, we're going to go ahead and check that out. Before we get started, if you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing. I'm trying to make this video short and sweet and to the point, um, so let me know how I do. And if I sound a little bit energetic, maybe I don't. I'm drinking a Celsius, which hopefully if you're watching this a few years from now, there's not like some lawsuit that it gives people cancer. Because um, I like them. I think they're pretty good. Go check them out. Not sponsored in any way. <laughs> okay, so we're going to create a SQLite database using the command line. There's a few things we need to do ahead of time. Number one, we need to download some executables. And the way to do that is you can go to the sqlite.org slash download page. I'll have it linked down below if you want to go check it out. And for me personally, I'm using Windows, so I need to go to this pre-compiled binaries for Windows. And this last one here, the SQLite tools, is the one I want to download. So I'll click on it. It'll download it. If we look in our downloads directory, there it is. And I don't want to keep it in my downloads directory, so I'm actually going to move it to my C drive. And I have a directory in here called temp, so I'll put it in here and then extract it here. Okay, so I can go ahead and delete the zip one now. And let's rename this one, because the name's kind of long, uh, to like SQLite 3. And inside of this directory, we have one executable that we're going to use specifically called SQLite3.exe. And so the question is, what if I want to create a database, a SQLite database, in this specific directory, the C temp. Well, if me and you both do this together and you're following along, uh, we're going to have different results, but I'll show you what happens and then I'll tell you why our results are going to be different. So if I open the command line and I cd to c temp and I run the command, it's pretty easy. It's just SQLite 3 and then whatever we want to name our SQLite database. So like test.db. This is going to create our database, but if we look right here, um, sometimes it doesn't show right away, but if I run the dot database command, now that we're in that SQLite executable, I notice that this often helps display it <laughs> in, the, in the file explorer. I'm not sure why, but now we can see our current database is in ctemp slash test dot db. And here it is. Here is our SQLite database. But if you were to try this and we're following along, when you run SQLite 3, it probably doesn't know what that application is, right? Windows doesn't know about it. And so what you need to do is you need to add this directory to your environment variables. It's pretty easy to do. You can go ahead and Windows look for environment variables. And so we'll go to environment variables here. And then under system variables, if we look at the path, hopefully I'm not showing you anything I shouldn't. I already did this before. But inside of my documents, I have that SQLite tools, blah, 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 and SQLite tools. If we actually go to this path for fun, you can see it's just another instance of these three executables when I was testing this out. So what you would want to do is wherever you unzip, you want to copy that path, and inside of your environment variables, you'll hit new, and then paste that path, and then OK. However, it's still not going to recognize it right away. You will probably have to restart your computer for it to recognize this environment variable. But once that's in the environment variables, now whenever, if I get out of this, Control-Z, whenever I type SQLite 3, it'll say, oh, I know what SQLite 3 is because I looked in all of the environment variables directories and in one of them, I found SQLite3.exe and then it'll use that executable when you run it in the command line. And there you go. That's basically how you create a SQLite database uh, via the command line. And if I wanted to go ahead and open this up in our database browser for SQLite, I can do that. So DB browser for SQLite, and I go to open database, and we'll go find this thing. So C temp. Here's our new one that we just created. We'll open it, and obviously it'll be an empty database. There's no tables, there's no views, no triggers, no end it indices, indexes, I like to call them. So yeah, we successfully created a SQLite database using the command line. Hopefully that all made sense. Uh, thanks so much for watching, and we'll continue with SQLite in the next video.